first I'm going to give you the definition of profiling and then I'll ask you some questions. Okay. Making judgments about an individual based on what they look like or how they dress. Okay, have you ever been profiled? And found out about it? No, I haven't. Not that I know of. Have you ever judged someone based on uh, what they wear or how they act? Yes, yes I have. So a lot of people would do it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think a, maybe a better question might be who hasn't profiled before, you know? Yeah. When I was younger, I would feel fine about it. Like, I just thought that's what you did. You know, you look at somebody, and based on how they look, you make a judgment call. But as I got older, pretty young, in, in elementary school, I realized that that was wrong, and so it made me upset when I did it or when other people did Um, Have you ever been profiled? Mm, yeah, a lot of times. How did it make you feel? Kind of like the... It was disrespectful that the person didn't want to get to know me first. So what do people usually profile based on? Is it like how tall you are, if you're a fat person or a skinny person? Like what They'll do profile we... you on anything. People want to be judged based on who they are on an individual by individual basis. And so people get upset when you kind of say, well, you look this way or you're from this certain type of people. So I'm going to make a judgment call on you. How do you feel about color profiling? I think it's okay. Do you think there are appropriate or useful ways to profile people? Yeah, sometimes. Have you ever been judged by someone and found out about it? And how did you react? So one time, uh, my wife and I we were supposed to babysit. Um, she works in early childhood education, and one of the parents asked her to babysit one of the kids. They wanted to go to a San Jose Sharks game, so they wanted us to babysit. So I go to this uh, neighborhood, and we parked in outside of their actual house. Uh, before the parents got home from work, we were supposed to meet them at the house. And this old couple from the other side of the street, they pull into their driveway and they're just looking at us. We're like, what are they? Why are they looking at us like that? Yeah. And this lady, she kind of goes into the house and she's looking back over her shoulder every couple steps. Um, so we're just sitting, chilling, listening to our music in the car until the people come home. And then the lady actually comes out to us and knocks on our window, like, Are you lost? Like, what are, you, what are you doing here in this neighborhood? And we're like, oh, you know, just because we're black, that doesn't mean that we're lost or that doesn't yeah. mean that, you know, we can't be in this neighborhood. Do you ever have people judging you because you're white? Oh, yeah, totally. I lived in New Mexico for a while, and New Mexico is made up of mostly Native Americans and Mexicans, and then there's some white people who live there. And when I was living there, I felt like a ghost sometimes. I would literally go up to a Native American or a Mexican sometimes and try and talk to them, and it would, I would get completely ignored. It's like I didn't even exist. So it was like reverse racism a little bit. And so that's, that was an interesting experience as a white person growing up in an area where mostly white people live. I'd never experienced that before, but now I understood. I wonder if that's what a black guy or a Mexican guy felt like walking down my street in the neighborhood. That's how I felt when I was in New Mexico. American male, about 30 years old, wearing a tie, a suitcase, and a suit. What do you think? Business worker. Worker. Black guy with sagging pants, just regular white t-shirt on, and a backwards hat. Uh, a pimp. Mm-hmm. Pimp. Really? Very interesting, very interesting. Um, how about a guy with like a torn up shirt and hobo. Hobo. No shoes. Hobo. Living in oh. the streets, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hobo. Hobo. Okay. Older man, probably about fifty, walking down the street wearing all red. What do you think of it? Gay. 
gangster, old gangster. Do you think that's fair when people do that? Like, can I wear red and not be a gangster? Or is that just always put on me? That's not fair. Let's say, like, if I'm wearing, like, all black, black stuff, people will think I'm goth. If someone ever profiled you, how would you feel if you found out about it? Depending on how they profiled me, um, I would either probably correct them or if they profile me as like bad in a bad way, then I'd probably ask why. Uh, as you see different people, have you guys personally ever profiled other people based on how they look or what they wear? Yeah, whenever I meet someone. In first grade, I became my best friend was this black kid, and my other best friend was this white kid, and he was telling me how I shouldn't be friends with him because he's black. And I remember getting really mad at him and saying, "Who told you that? Who told you that you can't be friends with black people?" I said, "Dad did, you know." So it's kind of that ignorance trickled down from his father. But that's kind of different than judging people based on the clothes they wear. So at, at some point in my life, I might have gotten really, really angry. But right now, I just work from a level of understanding that I know some people, they've only been exposed to certain things, so the way that they react is only from that certain vantage point. So now when I interact with people, um, you know, they might not act the way that I want them to, but at least I understand yeah. a little bit more. What did you learn about the actual angles and all that kind of stuff? When when you shake the camera, you can't see nothing but movements everywhere. But when you keep it still, it's like you're watching a movie that uh, that a camera never moves. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference about holding it right and, and not holding it right. What I've learned here in um, the flip cam that red and blue is affiliated to gang members and that if that goes to your family, that really is bad because you're making your like your own family a wrong choice to go on the negative side instead of positive side. Thank you for sure. No. Uh -huh. Do you like waffles? Yes, I like waffles. <laughs> Do you like pancakes? You still like pancakes. Cisco citizens, we are changing the rules. Bringing the cool to the kids at the citizen school. The flip is the tool. We show them how we're changing the way. We live and we learn and we play. What days are going to be like? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I made a paper airplane out of my hard written questions. Speaking upon the Cisco and Citizen Schools collaboration, we're showing the kids how to take Cisco flip cameras and not only point and shoot, but also how to plan, how to storyboard, how to communicate using this very, very important medium that we call video something that's very important to Cisco as well. So I just thought I'd share this and do a little video about it. Hope all of my uh, students at Kennedy Middle School get a chance to see this. Once again, Brandon Middleton signing off. Uh, you're probably familiar with our website, www.cisco.com, but maybe you could take one or two minutes to check out Citizen Schools and the awesome work that they're doing. I'm going to stop the music for this one. www.cisco.com citizen schools one word dot o-r-g all right once again this is brandon middleton representing the cisco csat program signing off for right now go ahead check them out citizen schools cisco systems when they come together it's like a beautiful thing all right peace out y'all hercules hercules